Heading into COP28 in Dubai, the United States and China are ramping up their climate cooperation, a partnership seen as critically important to fighting climate change. In Sunny Lands, California, climate envoys John Kerry and Xi Jinping agreed, among other things, to triple global renewable energy capacity by 2030 and, quote, operationalize a bilateral working group to accelerate climate action in the current decade. Both countries have acknowledged, perhaps in slightly different ways, that competition is certainly inevitable at this point. But I think from a climate change perspective, that at the same time, engagement and ideally cooperation is essential. So competition and, and cooperation are not mutually exclusive. I think that the joint Sunnyland statement is a key uh, reflector of that. There are some critical gaps in the statement. One is on the energy side, the lack of any really firm commitment around phasing down fossil fuels. And even more specifically on the China side, a commitment to limit emissions from coal power specifically. The second piece that is quite weak in the statement is commitments around ramping up the availability of global climate finance. Some sort of global consensus is really important, but agreement between the U.S. and China, which are coming from very, very different sides at this point, um, could go a long way toward prompting some degree of global consensus. The United Nations Climate Change Conference, otherwise known as COP, is a two-week annual summit where member states convene to tackle the Earth's changing climate. According to the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, also known as the IPCC, emissions from fossil fuels, specifically coal, oil, and natural gas, remain the primary driver of climate change. China and the U.S. are the world's top two greenhouse gas emitters, making up around 40% of total global emissions in 2022. From 1850 to 2021, however, the U.S. is responsible for the largest share of historical carbon emissions. China climate envoy Xi Jinping has said completely phasing out fossil fuels is, quote, not realistic. In contrast, U.S. climate envoy John Kerry has said the U.S. supports phasing out unabated fossil fuels. The IPCC defines such fossil fuels as those, quote, produced and used without interventions that substantially reduce the amount of greenhouse gas emitted. Targeting these fossil fuels will be a focal point of COP28. The European Union has also announced that a global phase-out will be part of the bloc's negotiating position. In Dubai, I will advocate tirelessly uh, for a global phase-out of uh, unabated fossil fuels and uh, peaking in consumption this decade, ideally already by 2025. Another key issue at COP28 will be actually setting up an official, quote, loss and damage fund to compensate developing nations affected by climate disasters. The decision to create the fund was initially agreed upon at COP27 in 2022. Developing countries have proposed a target of at least $100 billion per year by 2030. But the UN estimates that adaptation costs in those countries could reach $300 billion every year by the same time. Both the U.S. and China in the Sunnyland statement that we referenced uh, in this conversation have said that they agree with including a reference to those recommendations. Even if the fund becomes a reality, the United Nations Environment Program stresses that it will still not be effective if countries do not reduce their emissions. And at COP28, participating nations will get an important report card on their climate emissions targets that were set under the Paris Agreement in 2015. The UN is calling this the first ever, quote, global stock take on global climate change progress. After COP28, these assessments will occur every five years and will heavily influence future climate change fighting plans. We all probably know the answer, which is that we're not on track to meet our targets 
Right now, current climate change policies could cause the planet to warm by 3 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. That's double the 1.5 degrees of warming that the Paris Agreement had hoped for. The report shows that the emissions gap is more like an emissions canyon. A canyon littered with broken promises, broken lives, and broken records. Future climate collaboration between the U.S. and China remains uncertain. Both U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping won't attend COP28 this year. And Chinese climate envoy Xi Jinhua plans to retire in December 2023. The world really expects climate leadership from both the U.S. and China. The world sees China expanding its coal-fired pipeline. The world sees the U.S. expanding its fossil fuel production. These are things that if the U.S. and China can work together to figure out how to send a more ambitious signal, that could be critically important toward getting us on the mission's trajectory that we need to be on. 